welcome. My name is Luca Simeone. I'm a cultural anthropologist and uh, I, I carried out an ethnographic study of MIT Sensible City Labs Organizational Culture uh, in order to understand if there were components that uh, foster transdisciplinarity. Uh, Sensible City Lab is a research initiative at MIT. Um, it's located in, in Cambridge. Um, and it, basically it's a research group that studies the interface between cities, people and technologies and at the same time investigates how the ubiquity of digital devices and the transformation networks that augment our uh, cities today are impacting urban living. Um, within this framework, um, Sensible City Lab um, carried out um, several uh, really successful projects um, that span from um, architectural interventions to uh, design studies. Sensible City Lab is a really unique place. In seven years, um, roughly, three, roughly 50 projects have been carried out by 350 collaborators, uh, representing more than 60 different disciplines. Uh, architecture, urban studies and planning, um, uh, engineering, uh, but also, you know, uh, radically different disciplines like theology or game programming, Russian studies, medieval studies, sport, music, space science, and many, many other disciplines. So my research goal was to try to, to map uh, Sensible City Labs organizational culture behind this um, uh, radical transdisciplinarity in order to identify key components and best practices. Organizational culture uh, has three dimensions. Uh, the physical dimension, um, that is, you know, people sharing virtual and physical spaces. There's an organizational dimension, um, that is, you know, the way the lab is structured, so, you know, the relationships among the stakeholders, the rules, policies, processes and practices, management systems, and there's a cultural dimension that is composed by um, the cultural narratives, values and assumptions behind the organization and the personal biographies of people um, who are part of the lab. Uh, I started trying to map some organizational patterns behind transdisciplinarity. So the first thing that struck me was, you know, the fact that Sensible City Lab um, as a door that is constantly open, there are people uh, flowing in and out, um, researchers, students, collaborators. At times, um, th th there have been you know projects where uh, more than 60, 50 uh, different people, different researchers collaborated at the same time. Uh, the other interesting thing is that the lab hosts really um, strange elements at times. Um, it's it's kind of you know a, 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 a sort of repository of objects, strange objects coming from um, previous projects, previous and current projects being developed. And so you can find car dashboards, you can find um, bicycle wheels, uh, uh, components of flying robots, uh, all mixed up, uh, uh, all, you know, kind of casually distributed in the lab. Um, some of them uh, can be um, identified as boundary objects, so objects that, which are both plastic enough to adapt to local needs and constraints of the several parties employing them, but they are r robust enough to maintain a common identity across sites, and this, you know, are some important elements for uh, transdisciplinary communication. There are some um, some uh, tables where people can just sit, but uh, there aren't uh, seats assigned, and each researcher is, is not a fixed personal space. So in this sense, it's a uh, it's really difficult for, for researchers to uh, uh, personalize the space and to inscribe into the space their personal identity. It's more that the entire space is uh, uh, or represents uh, the, the, the group identity more than the individual's identity. And this is also reflected on some little rituals. In this case, for example, um, 
the, 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 the big table where all the researchers sit uh, is full of uh, small gifts, you know, left on the table like uh, um, candies or chocolate bars and these are not usually directed to specific people they're just, you know, left on the table for the group so again, you know, these physical exchanges um, act as a symbolic gate uh, towards group transculturation. Of course, there are also private offices, but again, um, the distribution of people across private and public space um, is really casual in a way. One of the researcher once told me, do you want to know a good thing about the lab? If you need an office, you just grab an office. Initially, I was a little bit shy. Now, when I need an office, I just go there and occupy it. So, again, you know, distribution of people is really flexible. And the core of the organization is composed of, uh, of teams. Teams are the key units of this uh, organizational order, and they basically supplant the traditional bureaucratic pyramid, you know, as the archetypal workgroup. So, Sensible City Lab is composed of small teams acting in a kind of, you know, a really flexible way, a really autonomous way. And also, you know, the, the membership is pretty flexible. Um, once one of the old researchers from, from the lab was collecting biographies for, from a, for a publication, and um, uh, she asked to a new member, hey, I'm collecting biographies from all the members of the lab. Do you, you send me your, your bio? And he answered, should I? Am I part of the lab? I've only been working here for a few weeks. So again, you know, you have this really fluid membership, short part-time engagements, a combination of academics and professionals from industry, flexible roles over time, and you have a really extended geographic distribution. This is a picture showing um, a big room, uh, actually from, from uh, the old lab. Uh, now the lab moved to, a, to another office, but you know, there are similar patterns. And you can see here, there are uh, two tables, two different styles. The table from, uh, the table on, on, the, on, the, on the left is the table uh, where the administrative officer sits. And you, you can see that her, her desk is really clean, it's really organized. And you know, um, there's this other table on the right side and it's really messy, it's really chaotic. So again, another strength of the lab uh, is that it allows people to follow their own uh, way of organizing, way, their own way of managing projects. And in this sense, again, it's really flexible. It's, it's more that the, 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 there's a low level of formalization and each team can, in a way, organize itself uh, according to its own rules. This is reflected uh, in, the, in, the, in the, also the ways uh, the projects are managed. Uh, you know, you can see there are uh, projects managed through uh, Gantt schemes, Gantt charts, and some other projects just manage it through, let's say, more fluid and, you know, uh, dynamic approaches. In, 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 a, in a few words, um, uh, Sensible City Lab is an hybrid organizational st structure. So again, it's, a, it's positioned as an organic, adaptive, self-organizing structure. But, you know, if you want, you can keep your traditional mechanistic components so you have you know that the, the most of the lab is an organic structure with you know a horizontal um, uh, integration uh, network of authority and control based on knowledge and a task there's a low formalization so tasks and responsibilities are usually redefined depending on the situation there's a decentralization, so decisions are made by those who knowledge, yeah? even if they are, you know, uh, horizontally distributed. Um, and this is, you know, th the way the lab works. But if you wanna keep, you know, uh, 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 within a team a really mechanistic structure, you can do that. And this is, you know, another component that 
uh, uh, fosters transdisciplinarity and different approaches. Of course, uh, um, it's not pure chaos. Um, there are coordination mechanisms. Pecha Kucha presentations are um, one of these coordination mechanisms. So in the end, there are like uh, quick feedback loops that control self-organizing teams and emerging behaviors and these quick feedback loops are meetings, Pecha presentations, updates via email and so on. I also sent a survey to current Sensible City Lab members and the survey was mostly targeted to analyze if researchers were happy with the way the lab is structured and organized and uh, as you can see, uh, the re re results and the answers from, from the researchers are really positive. So again, this was just you know a short presentation highlighting just some, some components, some elements of the study. But I think that you know also reviewing the scientific lecture to um, sensible city lab follows some organizational culture patterns that uh, favor transdisciplinarity. So there are flexible and permeable boundaries, there are independent and autonomous teams working, um, a network of authority and control based on knowledge on the task, um, management processes are usually decentralized and low formalized, and then there's like an experience, ex experiential learning and you know an inquiry and discovery based learning. These are elements that you know are present in um, sensible city, city lab organizational culture. But at the same time, they're also you know um, frequently reviewed in the literature as you know important components. Thank you. Uh, please uh, write me for uh, questions or feedback, and we'll be happy to send you the first uh, uh, report of the study.